Welcome to yet another Power BI tutorial from MIPE Consulting. The objective of this video is to familiarize the viewers with two methods to export a table from Power BI to Microsoft SQL Server. One method is by using Tax Studio and the other is by using R Script. Let's begin. In the first method to export a Power BI file to SQL Server, we are going to use the DAX Studio. For this, we have to install DAX Studio in our computer first. For that, in the browser, you can type daxstudio.org and then click on download the latest release of DAX Studio here. And the installation takes less than 10 minutes. Once you have installed, you can open DAX Studio. When DAX Studio opens, a connect window pops up. And in the connect window, you can see three options, cover pivot model, PBI or SSDT model and tabular model. In our case, we are going to select the middle one, namely the power. Power BI model. And at the moment, you can see that there's an alert saying that no running PBI or SSDT windows found. Open the Power BI desktop. Now let's go back to DAX Studio and you can see that it's automatically picked up the Power BI instance which is running here. To connect to Power BI, what we do is select this radio button against Power BI and click on connect. We can see the metadata here for the Power BI connection. Now the DAX Studio is connected with our Power BI instance. Now let's get data using Power BI. So let me go to the Power BI. We are going to import an Excel file. So let's click on get data and our data source being Excel. I click on Excel, click on connect and the file that I want is financial sample. Click on open. We can see two tables here. I choose financials and we can see the table here. It's a good table, so we don't need any transformation. So I click on load. We can see the financials table here and the various columns. If we want to look at the data, click on the data view and we can see the data here. Now that we have loaded the Excel file onto Power BI and it is ready for export, let's look at our SQL Server. I use Visual Studio to access my SQL Server. So let's go to Visual Studio. So this is my SQL Server. In the SQL Server, you can find three servers, but this is the server that I'm going to use. If I expand this, I can see the databases here. I have four databases of which the one which I'm going to use for this tutorial is PBI. And if I expand PBI, I can see tables, views, synonyms, etc. What we are interested in are the tables. So let me expand this. And we can see system tables, file tables, and external tables. So we are going to find our tables in the external table. I had already created this table dbo.customers, and that's why it's appearing here. For the timing, let me delete this. At the moment, you can see there's nothing under external tables. When we export our table and refresh the database PBI, we will be able to see the table that we've exported. Let's go back to Power BI again. We can see our data is ready for exporting. Let's go to DAX Studio. In the DAX Studio, let me click on connect. So we can see the server here, click on connect. And once I click on connect, I can see my financials table here. I select this table, go to advanced and click on export data. The export data wizard shows two options. You can export as a CSV file or you can export as an SQL table. But let's click on SQL tables. And here we have to give the server name and the database name. How to find the server name? So let me go to Visual Studio again. Desktop and to EESHV. This is the server name for my server. Similarly, you can look for your server name. Right click on this and click on rename. I can select the server name and control C, copy and paste it in DAX Studio. And the database name is PBI. So let's go to DAX Studio. Server name, I'm going to paste this and database name is PBI. I'm going to choose 
Windows authentication. The username and password are not required. If I choose SQL, I have to give the username and password here. Let's click on next and choose the tables that you want to export. I have only one table. Financials is already checked. Let's click on export. It says financials 700 rows exported. So let's close this. You can see the results here. Connection was established. Connection was established. Exported 700 rows. Model export complete. One table export. Now let's go back to Visual Studio. This is our database. Right click on PBI and click on refresh. And you can see that under external tables, we have the table dbo.financials. DBO is an extension which is given by SQL Server and financials is our table name. So the export has been successful. See how easy it is to export a Power BI table into SQL Server using DAX Studio. The second method of exporting a Power BI table into SQL Server is using the R script. For that, first of all, we have to install R Studio. R Studio can be installed from rstudio.com. You can type rstudio.com in your browser. If you hover over the products, you can see R Studio. Click on this, you will get an executable file which you can install. Installation process is quite easy. When you launch RStudio, RStudio console looks like this. We can type our commands here. In case you want to clear this, you can press the keys Control and L. We have to install RODBC package before we start exporting tables from Power BI. So let's type install dot packages. Within parentheses, we have to put single quotes RODBC. This is the package that we have to install. Let's press the Enter key. So it says package RODBC successfully unpacked and MD5 sums checked. The downloaded binary packages are in this. Let's go to Power BI and get our table ready. In Power BI, we are going to get data from a JSON data source. I have already downloaded the data. I obtained the JSON data from this link in github.com and I pronounce JSON as JSON. However, the exact pronunciation is stated in this video by the creator of JSON language, Douglas Crockford. Doug Crockford of Yahoo. So I discovered JSON. JSON, uh, JavaScript object notation. There's a lot of argument about how you pronounce that. I strictly don't care. Um, I think probably the correct pronunciation is JSON. So you've seen that video and you can decide how to pronounce it. At the moment, I'm going to pronounce it as JSON. Let's go to Get Data in Power BI Desktop. And our file is a JSON file. Let's click on JSON, click on Connect. And my JSON file is Customers. Select that and click on Open. So the JSON file, when it open, it shows a single column called list consisting of many records. Let's click on record and the record consists of one row of data with columns ID, email, first, last, company, created at and country. One advantage of Power BI is that you can find all the steps that you went through under the applied steps pane. So in case you want to undo a step, you just need to delete it so you will get back to the original position. So let me click on this and we are back here. Now what we are going to do is convert this to a table. So let me click on convert to table. Create a table from a list of values. We don't have a delimiter so delimiter is none. How to handle extra columns? Show as errors in case there's a problem. So let's click on OK. And we can see that a table has been created. This table has only one column, which is named as column one, but this is expandable. So let's click here and you can see all the columns here. We need all the columns. We select all the columns. We can click on load more, but we have only these many columns. Let's uncheck this box. Use original column name as prefix. We don't need that. Now click on OK. You can find that our data has been 
loaded from the JSON file. The name of the table is customers. Now the data is ready for exporting. And before exporting, what we need to do is go to File, Options and Settings, click on Options, click on R Scripting because we are going to use R scripts for exporting data. You can find detected R home directories. If you're comfortable with this, you can choose this. By default is this. To choose R integrated development environment, it is called IDE. You want Power BI to launch, select a detected IDE from the drop down list or select other to browse to another IDE. My detected R IDE is R Studio and I'm comfortable with that. So you have other options here, but I'm going to go with R Studio. So let's click on OK. And the moment you do that, in the Transform tab, you can see Run R Script icon. We can use this button to input our R Script. So let me click on this. You can find this window Run R Script. Enter R Scripts into the editor to transform and shape your data. Whenever you see a hash, it shows that it is a comment. It is not a program statement. It is just a comment which will not be executed by the R program. It says data set holds input data for the script, which means that this table, which is called customers, will be referred to as data set when we export to R. Let's type our script here. I have a script already typed, so let me copy that. So let's have a look at the R script. I have started with a comment saying that if you have not already installed RODBC package in R Studio, install dot packages RODBC within codes and within parentheses. This is just a reminder in case you've not installed the package. Now the actual command is this. To run a package, we have to load the library. For loading the library, we type the statement library within parenthesis RODBC. Here we don't need the code. Now we have to connect Power BI to the SQL Server database. And for that, this statement has been used. Where did I find the statement? I will show you the link. In this website, we have a document setting up R to connect to SQL Server. In this, we have the total command list, install.packages RODBC and library RODBC, and it says DB handle, ODBC driver connect, etc. And after connecting, we just need to save the SQL file into the SQL Server. So we need only this line, this line, this block of statements, and then the save new file, this block of statements. So let's go back to Power BI. So first of all, connect to SQL Server database. What we are essentially doing here is we are invoking the ODBC driver connect function. And in that we have to give the driver name, which is SQL Server and server name, which we already know we've used it in the DAX Studio. So we use this. Then we know the database. It is PBI. And in case we use the Windows authentication, we say trusted connection equals true. If we are using the SQL authentication, we have to give the username and password of the SQL connection. So in my case, I'm using the Windows authentication. So I'm saying trusted connection equals true. We need to be fully aware of the syntax. The result of this function, ODBC driver connect, is stored in a variable called DB handle. And this symbol, which is like an arrow, is an assignment symbol. The result of this function will be assigned to this variable DB handle. So the connection will be effected. Now we have to save the table at the SQL Server database. For that, we use the SQL save function. Which connection do we use? We use the DB handle. And this table is called the data set. As we know, the data set is the input. So we have to convert the data set into data frame, which is readable by our programming language. So we use the function data.frame for converting 
any data set into a data frame. So data dot frame data set. And the table name is the table name that we are going to create in the SQL Server database. So let's call it customers because the table name is customers. Row names equals false. Let's see what it is. If we look at this example, baskets.team, this is a matrix. We have the column names first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And Granny and Geraldine are the row names. So let's go back to our table. In our table, we can find that there are no row names. We have only column names. We say row names equal false and append equals false because append is only when you add data to an existing table. At the moment, we don't have any existing table. We are going to create a new table, SQL Server, so we don't need this. Once the file is saved, we can close the Power BI's connection with the SQL Server. It's a good practice to close the server connection so that the system resources are optimally used. It's close and the name of the connection, DB handle. And let's click on OK and see what happens. Now, our entire table has been moved to the SQL Server database. In case you want your table still in Power BI, it would be better to duplicate this table, put another name, and then move it to SQL Server. Let's go back to our SQL Server. Right click on our database Power BI. Click on Refresh, Tables. Under External Tables, you can see the new table, dbo.customers. We can see that the export has been successful. Let's see if we have data inside this. For that, we can query this. This icon is for new query. Click here. Let me type a SQL query. Select top 100 star from customers. So what I'm essentially doing is asking SQL to select the top 100 rows from the table customers. To execute the query, let me click here. And you can see that the top 100 customers are listed here. The table has been exported without any issues from Power BI to SQL Server. Hope you found this video useful. We at MIPE value your feedback a lot. Thank you very much and see you again with another Power BI video. Thank <laughs> you.